Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. In this video, we will try to focus on files. But why do we need files in the first place? Think about this, let's say if you are working with a code and of course when you write a code you will use certain variables and in those variables you will be storing some data. Now most of the data which we use in variables are temporary data right if you want to count a variable, if you want to store some data, like temporary data you will store that in a variable. But what if you want to save a data in a persistent way, Now, I mean simply uh, for a longer period. Now of course the moment you close the application, you will lose all the data. What I want is even if I close the application, I want my data to be stored somewhere. And that's where you need to find a permanent storage. One of the way you can do that is by using a relational database. Example, you can use MySQL, you can use Oracle, but then it also provides you a table structure, right? And those are complex stuff. What if you want to store something for a longer period, but then in a simple format? And the best way to go for is text. So let's imagine we have a text file here, which is my data. And inside this my data, I have some data. You can see it's my name there, there is channel name and it's a programming channel and all those stuff, right? So we have this data, random data, and I want to use this data in a code. So how do I open this file in a code? I know it seems difficult, right? The moment you say, hey, how can you open an external file in a code? Back of your mind, you might be thinking, oh, it will be very complex, but don't worry. As we mentioned before, Python is the easiest language and to do all this stuff, we already have some inbuilt functions. So let's do that. So one of the function or method we can use here is known as open. So you simply say open. You have to pass two basic parameters here. The first one is the file name itself. And the file name here is my data. Okay, so you have to mention the file name. Do we have the extension for this? I don't think so. So you have to mention the file name and you need to also mention the mode. Now what is mode here? See, when you work with a file, of course, there are different purposes you can use files. One of the reasons we use file is to read the file. One reason to open a file is to write something in it or maybe to overwrite something in it. So there are different purposes, right, to open a file. In the same way, here when you open a file, you have to show your purpose. Do you want to read a file? Do you want to write a file? Now you might be thinking, why does it even matter? If I open a file, I want to do whatever I want. See, the thing is, when you work on a complex system, you might be working with multiple threads, you want to give certain permissions. And to read a file, we may achieve multi-threading, but to write a file, we have to make sure we are using only one thread or something like that. Again, that's a complex stuff, but time being imagine, whenever you open a file, it's very important for a system to know what your intentions are. Now, how do you mention your intention? It's very simple. You just need to use R here. The moment you say R, it means you are opening this file for reading. Okay, so we have done with the opening of file, but then if you want to handle that file, you will save that file somewhere. So you will say F is equal to open. So you can imagine this F is a file now. It's not actually, it's a simply object or a reference, but you can imagine, okay? So time being, you can say this is a file. Now with this file, you can do certain operations. Example, I want to print file. Let's see what happens when you print F as it is. So I'm printing F here. Let's see what, what it says. Let's run this demo. And you can see F is of type text IO wrapper with name my data with the mode R. So it is giving you all different features. So it is giving you everything except one thing, which is the data, of course. How do you fetch data? It's very simple, actually. So this open, in fact, when you talk about files, it provides you certain methods to use. One of the methods which we can use here is read. So we can use read to fetch the data. Let's see what happens now. I'm using read and let's run this code. Oh, we got everything. So it's so simple to print a data from a file in Python. Now, what if you don't want to print the entire file? You want to print only one line. The first line, uh, do we have an option? So the moment you say control space, you can see, so it has certain names. We have read, we have read line, and then we have read lines. Okay, so let's use read line here. Now when you say read line, and let's see what happens when you say read line. Okay, just an experiment. So you can see when you say read, it will print everything. When you say read line, and let's run this code, you can see it only prints the first line. Oh, okay, so that means when you use read line, it will print only first line. What if I want to print the second line? 
So it's very simple. Just copy this code. So every time you say read, it has a inbuilt pointer inside it. So when you say read line, the pointer will move to the second line now. And then when you say read line now, it will fetch the second line. It will the pointer will move to the third line. Let's verify. So let's run this code. You can see we are getting my name is Navin Reddy and second line is Telisco on YouTube. Now you might be thinking why we got this space here. It's because print itself will give you a new line and in this data as well you have new line, right? So after every line you have a new line plus print will also give you new line. We don't want a new line after print so we'll say end. So let's put a symbol by mentioning hash. So let's say when you use hash it means we have done with the line 1 and line 2. Okay, so you can see this is what it does. It says hash. Okay, so we should be doing that before as well, right? So time let's remove that. So yeah, so the idea is when you say, when you don't put end, it will by default just new line. So now we know how to work with read line and read. Can we mention the line number? Okay, that's a question. Let's say if I mention line number four, and if I don't use second one, let's see what happens. Will it accept it? Oh, it is only printing four characters. Okay, so when you say four, it will print only four characters. That's great. So you can use this function and this is how it works. But how do we write data? So we know how to read. Now I want to know how to write the data. So in order to write the data, first of all, let me remove that. See, we cannot use R to write something. We have to use W to write something. So what I'll do is let me use another file here. We'll say F1 and let me open that file. And we have to mention the file name here as well. So I will say the file name here is ABC and we have to mention the write command. So the moment you say W, it means you are trying to write something in a file. But hold on, if you see on left hand side, we don't have any file as ABC. Now what will happen? So now it is smart here. So when you say open a file with a write mode, it will first check, do we have a file there? So we don't have a file, right? So it will create a file for you. Let me show you. So if I run this code, you can see we are getting a new file, which is ABC. And if I open this file, uh, yes, it's a text format. You can see we don't have any data. Of course, we don't have a data there, right? So let's print something. And the way you can print data is by saying F1 dot, and you can use a write command. So you can say write, and here you can write something. I will say something, okay? <laughs> let's see what happens now. So let's run this code and you can see we are not printing anything in the console. That's why we're not getting any stuff here. Let's go back to ABC and you can see in ABC we got something. So you can write multiple data here. You can also write something, let's say F1 dot and you will say people. Let's run this code and you can see in ABC we will get something and people. Of course, you can give a space in between while writing this code. Okay, so this makes sense, right? Okay, so what if, if I say f1 dot write, so I know that in my file, we already have something and people, I want to say something people laptop. So in my file, I want to also add laptop. How do I do that? So here you will simply say laptop, right? That's what we are expecting here. But the twist is if I run this code, look at the output, look at the file. Can you see that we lost all the previous data, right? So we lost something, we lost people, we only have laptop now. It's because when you say W, it simply means write the file. What if you don't want to write a file? You want to append something. If I say, let's say here, if I say mobile, I want to append mobile after laptop. In that case, you will open a file with A. So A means append. So W is write, R is read, A is append. And now let's run this code. And if I go back to ABC, you can see we have laptop and mobile. So remember this thing, we have R, we have W and we have A. Okay, now what I want to do is we have two files, right? We have ABC and we have my data. What I want to do is I want to copy everything from my data. I want to save that in ABC. That's a difficult step, right? So first read all the data from my data and then write everything in ABC. Two steps. First of all, let's understand how do you fetch everything from my data. We have seen one way, right? We can use read line, but then how many times you will say read line? How do we know when your file will get over? That will be impossible to track. So the best way is you can actually use a for loop and you say for data in F, right? So what it will do is it will run a loop and on a file F, of course, it will run a loop and it will try to fetch everything one by one. So if you can see if I print, if I print data one by one and look at the output, it will print everything. We have extra line there, right? So but time and ignore that. The important thing is it is fetching everything one by one. So we have to use the same concept when you write in ABC as well. So of course, you will use a for loop here. You will say for data in F 
and then every time you run this loop you have to say f1 dot write and you will write the data which is data right so now it will in abc you will have all the data about from my data let's run this code go back to abc and can you see that we got all this data here awesome right so this is how you can work with files so we can use read we can use write we can use append now just to show you something i have one more thing so let me just remove this stuff from here so we have a file which is my data right now if you can see on left hand side we have pic as well so there's a jpg image if i open that you can see it's my photo here so there's a very simple photo what i want to do is i want to copy this file or maybe i want to print all the data about that file can you print data of course right when you talk about an image it is made up of the binary formats right the pixel intensity all those values so of course those are numbers itself let me try to print the data of an image let's see how that looks so i will say for i in f i don't know if will it will work or not let's try uh, let me print i so let's see how exactly it looks like let's run this code oh we got an error it says char map okay so not decode oh that's an issue the thing is in files we have two different modes one is character mode and second is binary mode now when you would work with file and that file has data like characters numbers you can use a character format but here you're working with a file right which is an image and when you work with image, we don't have characters inside image, right? We have numbers, we have binary format. And that's why you need to read this file in a binary format. Now, how do you mention that? It's very easy. Simply use RB. So RB means read binary. And now let's run this code. Oh, can you see that? This is my values of the image. Okay, so all these are hexa code and that's why it is printing like this, you know, hexa values. Yeah, so you can see we are printing all these values. But then it doesn't make any sense, right? This thing doesn't make any sense. What I will do is I will save this data in a particular file, maybe another image. How do I copy this image and make another image? It's very simple. Let's create a file. I will say file one equal to open. And the way we have done before, but then this time I will give a different name. I will say my pick, not my data this time, my pick dot jpeg and then we will give a mode. So any guess, of course we have to say write, but then write binary. We have to make sure that we write, we use write binary. Instead of printing it, you will say f1 dot write and you will write whatever is coming from the file one, which is from this file. Let's run this code. There's no error. Go back to, okay, so we can, can you see that we got my pick. Open that. Oh, we got a picture. Okay, so you can see we have two copies of my image. This is one image, this second image, right? So this is how you can work with files with characters and binaries. Let me know in the comment section if you're enjoying this series and if you have any doubts as well. So that's it. Hit that like button and do subscribe for, for the video. Bye-bye.